to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Another new day. Good morning, branches. Good morning, America. Good morning, America. That's right. Good morning, America. Good morning, world. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Where would we be if it had not been for the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Today, we lay everything down, Lord, at the foot of the cross. We cast every care, every burden, Lord God, at the foot of the cross this morning. And we come to worship. We come to bow down in your presence. We are the sheep of your sheepfold today, Father. You are the potter. We are the clay. We are the earthen vessels, Lord, that you have invested in the life of your Son. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you this morning. We are grateful people, Lord. Grateful this morning because you came. Amen. You rose from the dead. You ascended into heaven. Yes. You're sitting and making intercession for us today at the right hand of the Father. And you sent your Holy Spirit to indwell us today. We thank you, Lord, for the power of your Spirit in us, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that teaches us, that comforts us, that admonishes us, leads us, prods us, whatever. He is doing a work in all of us. Praise God. In the work that he started, he is faithful to complete. Don't you forget that. Amen. He is faithful to complete the work. All we need to do is cast our sorrows and our cares, everything on him, and allow him to do that work in us. Amen. So, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Yes. This morning. Oh, God, let it be all you and none of us. Yes, Lord. This morning, amen. I'm 
face tomorrow God we don't have shame God because you're in our tomorrows already you're in our todays you are there yesterday today and forever thank you Lord Jesus there is none like you Lord there is none like you hallelujah hallelujah oh God almighty all our days are in you Lord God we want to praise the wonders of your mighty love and your mighty name. Let every breath, oh God, give you praise and honor today. Glory to your name. Jesus, Jesus, name above all names. Mighty Counselor, Prince of Peace is he. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, and he is the captain of the hosts. Thank you, Jesus. And his banner over us today is love, joy, peace, and hope in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
my Jesus Oh 
Well, bless the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the reading of your word today, Father. Illuminate it to us, Lord. Jesus, may it speak life to us. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh. Amen. Good night, honey. Hey, your address. Praise the Lord. Praise God Almighty. Amen. Be magnified. my light closer. Amen. Today we're going to go move ahead and go into Job 10 after that illuminating study in that absolute crucial chapter 9. And I hope you I hope you saw what we're, we were getting at as, as why we feel that it, this Amen. that chapter is one of the key chapters mm -hmm. um, in understanding our salvation. Um, there's there's just some amazing declarations there yes um by job and particularly <coughs> the last one that we talked about and of course that is <coughs> oh, sorry the need of human beings to have a mediator mm -hmm. an advocate between god and ourselves and this is this is this theme will be carried on again throughout the pages of the rest of job um, well, we'll see it now and again, but we, what we talked, we did talk yesterday and, and that's the 10th chapter is really going to go a little bit more into this. We did talk about a Job. His position is that he has been hauled into the divine courtroom. Mm -hmm. He has been charged with a high crime, but he has no idea what it is. And that that's, that's really spurring him on and motivating him to ask all these questions, you know, because, and because it's testing what he, up until that point, when he believed about God, about being merciful, about being a just God. And now it seems like, I, I, again, well, can you imagine that he's going along in life and prospering and his children are doing well as, you know, he has an abundance all around him and in one day everything changes everything's gone one day everything's gone. i mean you gotta wonder like okay what is going on here lord and God. that's an, that's that's an absolutely good point because we all know people and maybe it's happened to ourselves mm -hmm. where that has happened to us that it is the way of kind of again one of those themes that the book of ecclesiastes just talks about is is this the way of mankind, the things that happen happen to men are common to all, and maybe something like this has happened to you, hmm. uh, or, or you know someone near and dear to your heart where this has happened to. It's 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 common. It's more common than perhaps we'd like to think it is. Um, well, I would question if life is always going along really well all the time. You never have any troubles. You know, every everyone loves you, everyone likes you, everyone speaks well of you, and, and you know, you got to wonder, like, okay, because people who are usually, you know, really making a difference in the kingdom, they're always full of trials and tribulations and troubles and, why is and that? testings, why is that? because God is refining them, Yes, definitely. and their name is written in hell on big neon lights. Look out for this one. She's dangerous. All those He's are, dangerous. All those <laughs> things are true. But I was thinking more of the verse that Paul says that we've quoted many times. That mm -hmm. all those who desire to live yes. on the incorrect are going to suffer. Self suffer what? Yeah. Persecution. Amen. Right? Now again. From the outside and from That's a New Testament. The demonic. <laughs> that that's a New oh. Testament revelation that mm -hmm. has certainly has come about through centuries of experience by the jewish people starting with with joe this idea he you know remember god is telling satan that praise the lord he's he's you know have you have you considered my job my my, my, job my servant, servant job my servant job <laughs> how upright and, and 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 outstanding he is and um how righteous he is and uh well job okay. knows this and which is why he's he, again he's having these questions now 
we, as I said, we got into the latter, in the latter part of the study yesterday to, that Job is in, feels he's in this courtroom. He's being charged and he doesn't know what. So he's going to be spending pretty well the rest of the book trying to find out what he's being What's charged on, with. Right? You know, he, he'll he complain about his state <clears throat> and the things that are happening to him. But he wants, and we can understand this. We all do. We want a reason why. He wants to know a reason why. He, he knows that, that you know, people people shouldn't be just, ha this shouldn't be happening to them senseless with no reason. Part of chapter 9 that we talked about was him questioning, uh, questioning God about that. You, you don't do anything without reason. There has to be a reason here. But he wants to know. He wants to know, but because he can't talk to God directly, he won't. He he says, "I need this advocate. I need I need this mediator." And we all do. So mm -hmm. let's jump into he's Chapter he's 10. he's continuing on now with his dissertation. The other thing I want to point out before before we start reading this is when Job is when Job's friends are talking to him, they're talking about Job. Right, they're bringing God into the conversation, but because God's this way, this is what's happening with you. You're the one. You're the problem. They're they're addressing Job directly, but if you notice when Job responds to their attacks, he's not talking to them. He rarely talks to them. Right. He's talking to God. To God. He's asking God these questions. Right. right. It's almost as if they're not there. He sometimes he'll bring them in. He'll you know something that that they said piques something in him, and sometimes he'll he'll. Bring that in. But for the most part, from here on in, this is Job having a conversation with God without a mediator, without an advocate. So Job chapter 1, there's chapter 1, Job 10, verse 1. Job chapter 1, verse 10. <laughs> <laughs> Job 10, verse 1. The book of Job, chapter 10. My soul loathes my life. I will give free course to my complaint. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will say to God, Do not condemn me. Show me why you contend with me. Does it seem good to you that you should oppress, that you should despise the work of your hands and smile on the counsel of the wicked? Do you have eyes of flesh, or do you see as man sees? Are your days like the days of a mortal man? Are your years like the days of a mighty man, that you should seek for my iniquity and search out my sin, although you know that I am not wicked, and there is no one who can deliver from your hand? So, here we have, we talked about this yesterday, where we left off Job, that, again, here's his repeating this, this constant theme, is like, I, I love my life. And Job dares to speak to God as an equal. It's true. He dares to speak That's to true. God as he's equal. speaking. He's, he's almost speaking to God as if God is in that circle of his friends right, that are around, right. him, around him. And again, and, but again, he's going to have these recurring themes, as we've mentioned before. One of them is how much he hates his life now. Oh, yeah. Out of this how many times has he said that now? And Three now he's going to say times. it again. I love, right. I love my very life. Yeah, my soul loathes my life. And therefore I will give free reign to my complaint and speak out in the bitterness yeah. of my soul. There it is again. We mentioned that a lot yesterday. We mentioned it now. Job chapter 7 verse 11. He's already said this. He's already prefaced all his his remarks by this. And here he is confirming it. Job 7 11. Remember it says this. Therefore I will not keep silent. Mm -hmm. I will speak out in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. It's absolutely important, crucial to understand. This is where Job's talking about. He understands where this bitterness is coming from. It's coming from the bitterness of his soul because mm -hmm. of the, the consequences yes. uh, and and uh, of his situation, the things that have happened to him. And it's a, a perfectly human response. We would all respond in the same way. You may think you wouldn't. But I'm, I'm, I'm afraid we probably all would respond like Job. I think all Job wants is a fair trial. Just he wants a fair, a trial. fair trial. Well, part of that fair <laughs> trial is, again, really important. What am I being charged yeah. with? You know, you would ask that yourself if you were hauled into a courtroom. You were arrested and hauled into a courtroom. You'd want to know what you were being charged with. It would you know, be we, baffling, that's for sure. We, we, and, and that's exactly what he's saying here in verse 2. And again, this is, goes back to what Anne was saying about speaking to God as an equal. I say to God, so he's making this declaration. He's mm -hmm. prefacing this. 
It, this isn't just a rhetorical question he's asking. He's talking directly to mm -hmm. God. I say to God, I say to you. He's asking him questions too. Do not declare me guilty, but tell me what charges you have against me. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there it is. There he finally gets it out. What are you charging me with here? What what am I being charged with? What what what's the issue, God? And he knows that it's God. It's coming from yes. God. It's not coming from anything else that he might have done. Because he can't he doesn't understand, you know. God's allowing this through Satan. Really. And, and so he hmm. another list of rhetorical questions here. Does it please you to oppress me to spurn the work of your hands? Right? Does God oppress his creatures? Just just for the sake of because he's a masochist, well, a masochist no. is a sadist. No. God is not that. No. You know, oppress the works of your hands. Well, that's how, mm -hmm. that again, that's a, 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 um, a, a declaration. I was going to say a declaration, but um, that's a statement of Job's belief that he, all human beings, were created by God. We are the works of his hands, right? Um, and, of course, this all refers to Genesis 1. 26 we all know about that and god said let us make man in our image um there's all sorts of there's all sorts of verses there i was just reading that uh, that that refers back to this idea of mankind being the works of god's hand i'm gonna sneeze i hope not yeah you don't want him to sneeze believe me <clears throat> i think he realizes that there's no one who can deliver him from God's hand? Nobody, nobody can. Well, he know he knows that. Yeah. But again, this goes back to remember what yesterday I said he got, that he made this statement that I said was absolutely wrong, and that um, he said. Uh, but, uh, where he. God destroys both the wicked and the blameless together. Yes. Um, can't find it right now, but I will. But and he, and here he's 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 kind of going along that same path. He's he's reiterating this in different words. He said, "Does it please you to spurn the work of your hands while you smile on the plans of the wicked?" Mm. Remember, when I said yesterday that, that that this is changing Job's perspective about God. It's changed that reverential fear of God into he's he's absolutely afraid of god he's afraid of what god will do he's it's like the child and i hate to use this analogy but it's almost like this it's like the child that has suffered physical and mental abuse from a parent mm -hmm. and at a point they get to a point where anybody who raises their hand they cringe back they they yeah you know animals too animals too Yes, right. That's right, honey. If you mistreat your animals, mistreat mm -hmm. your dogs. You know, Whenever you go see, and pet them, they'll they'll like. It, it's yeah. Back it's away. that defensive mechanism that that God builds in everyone, and that's mm -hmm. a, this is almost what God is, or Job is kind of seeing God as. He's now stopped being that loving, blessing God, and now he's a God that punishes for no reason whatsoever. As so God raises his hand, Job draws back, mm -hmm. and he says. Do you have eyes of flesh? Do you see as a mortal sees? Well, obviously not. Right. Because we we know in Isaiah that God's ways are higher than our ways and God's thoughts are, are higher, higher than, than our, our thoughts. thoughts. He doesn't see. And who can know them? And again, uh, along in, in conjunction with that in the New Testament, where in a, we mentioned this before, when, when Peter, when Jesus said that he was going to Jerusalem to be crucified, and Peter said, "Lord, that's not going to help. That's not going to happen. We're going to keep you here. We, we we've got to keep you from going to Jerusalem." And what was Jesus' response, Peter? You think as men think, and not as God thinks. So, in that rhetorical question, we know the answer to that. And what he's saying, though, if you think, and Job is saying, if you think like a man, well, yes, men can do this. Men can inflict punishment just for the sake of the joy it gives them. We call it sadism. Yeah. Or just to exercise their power. But God isn't like that. But he's saying, are you like a man? If, if you see with mortal eyes, do you, you think, is your heart that way? Because that, that's the way you're treating me. Are your days like those of a mortal? Or your years like those of a strong man? In other words, do you have a finite... Again, go, I, I, again we're going to have these recurring themes throughout Job. My life is short. 
I only have a I only have a short time. I have a finite time here on the earth. Is, are you the same way? Is your existence the same way? You know, the answer there, obviously inferred, is no, because he knows that God is immortal. God was before and time began. God was there in the beginning. God will be there in the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he's saying that I, I, I'm used to men, and, and we all are, of, of people criticizing us, looking for faults in each other. That's what human beings do, unfortunately. We all look for faults. We're all guilty of it. Unfortunately, we do. We look for faults in other people. But God is changing. And he's saying, mm -hmm. is that what you do? Do you search out my faults and probe after my sin? Is that what this is all about? You're probing. Are you like, are you like my friends here who think that I have sinned and you're probing me and you're torturing me to see, to try to get at, to make me to confess mm -hmm. to something that I know I'm not guilty of? Because that's what he says. So you know that I'm not guilty. I'm not guilty. And yet you'll put me on the torture's rack and torture me like I oppress was guilty. Him. Oppress, him. oppress him. And of course, that's because you are that. God, there's no there's no seventh cavalry here coming over the hill. There's nobody here to rescue me. You can <laughs> you can do with you what you want no with me with impunity. God. That's what he says. No one can rescue me I'm from free. your hand. And that's true. You know. That the very one of the most famous evangelical uh, sermons that were ever given were given by Jonathan Edwards right. in in the eighteenth century in colonial America, and of course, it is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of an angry God, and that's almost what Job is saying here. Mm -hmm. He says, "But these hands that I've fallen into, oh." And that, that's good. so we're now going to go read from verse 8 to 12. Your hands have made me and fashioned me an intricate unity, yet you would destroy me. Remember, I pray, that you have made me like clay, and will you turn me into dust again? Did you not pour me out like milk and curdle me like cheese? Clothe me with skin and flesh and knit me together with bones and sinews. You have granted me life and favor, and your care has preserved my spirit. Okay, so here he's talking about, he, he leads off in verse 7 by saying, I'm, who, I've fallen into your hands, and who can rescue me from your hands? He's talking about the hands of God being destructive, being probing for sin, wanting... The contradictory wanting, nature of God. Yeah, want, wanting to inflict pain. Mm -hmm. inflict Not like God. But now he says, but well, those same hands that, that it seems like you're coming against me, those are the same hands that created me. Mm -hmm. It says, your hands made me and shaped me. Mm -hmm. Again, that goes back to the metaphor of the potter. That's why it is, it's, it's a strong metaphor in the Bible about God being the potter and we being the, the pot. Because it, mm -hmm. in, those, you know, in those days, you can see the potter actually sitting outside his little shop or even on the corner. So you could watch him shaping pots. And people would see shape the, the potter using various techniques on the wheel to shape different pots. They weren't all the same. They were all different. They all had different uses. Depending too. on how he did it, different uses. That's right. Mm -hmm. As Paul says, in a yes. great house there are two, you know, there's knives, paraphrasing, there's knives and forks that you use for everyday use. And then there's the good silver that you use, you know, when, when your best guests pots. come over, mm -hmm. you know, and now and then. He said... These hands that shape me, these hands that made me, are now, are, is this now going to be the hands that destroy me? He said, you, you made me, and yet now you're going to destroy me? And again, goes back to the potter. Remember that you molded me like clay. Again, there's that potter's, that potter image, that potter um, metaphor. Will you now turn me to dust again? We always know, whenever we hear that phrase in the Bible, back to dust always means mm -hmm. death always right. means remember that in Ecclesi from ecclesiastes right. 12 quoted this a lot too that you were when the golden bowl is broken your life when the silver cord is cut your, your life on this planet on the, in this world ecclesiastes right? ecclesiastes 12 your body will return to the dust from which it was made and the spirit will return to god who gave it and it's an important way to think, and, and of course, we this this happens all over 
the Bible, all over the scriptures. That and again, whenever you will you turn me to dust again, like it says right here, that means will you now kill me? Will I now die and go to the grave and become part of the earth again? I'm sure he has a lot of questions because God, you're the one that fashioned me, you made me. And then you're doing this, like you're coming you're at me like this. I've always understood you to be a good God, a good God of creation. Is this why you made me? Yeah. So you can kill yeah. me? Huh. Exactly. And you but he, he doesn't realize that God's doing all this for his good. He doesn't, well, he doesn't see that. Yes. Yes and no. Remember, he's allowing it. He's allowing it. But it, it, it's really the way I see this. You, you may or may not agree. And I, But the way I see this is this is God testing his work in Job. Mm -hmm. And he and he yes, does exactly. he tests all our he, he does that for all of us. That's what I mean. That's what Paul means when he said we'll suffer persecution because God will test, you know, mm -hmm. not tempt. You think he's not going to come out a, a better, stronger, um, in character? And, oh, and absolutely, his, he will. You know, for, absolutely, he will. His Anyone love will. for the Lord, his knowledge of the Lord, his understanding of oh, God. Oh, for sure. Yes, absolutely. Just going through all these. Yes. These tests? Absolutely. He's in God's school of hard knocks right mm. now. But he A lot will, of us are. He will benefit from this. And the first benefit is, and when we get into the later chapters of Job, when God starts, eventually starts to speak, you will see mm. what Job learns. Humbles himself. And, what, and, and by Job learning how we all learn about God. Mm -hmm. um, did you not pour me out like milk and curdle me like cheese? Clothe me with skin and flesh and knit me together with bones and sinew. I get the skin and flesh, and knit me together with bones and sinew, but you do not pour me out like milk and curdle me like cheese. Hmm. Not exactly sure what that metaphor is referring to. I don't know if it's referred to the actual birth process or is this referring to how he feels now, the, the, the situation that, that God has basically turned this man of bone of skin and bone. Well, how do you curdle cheese? Well, how do you tell me? I don't know. I'm, I'm asking you. Do you sit there and churn it? Or do you... I, I know you churn butter. I boil it on the stove? I, I, and keep stirring it and well, keep stirring I'm sure, it? I'm sure somebody in the chat will tell us the cheese. I seem to remember my aunt making curds out of cheese once. And she had to boil the milk. And oh, yeah? she kept stirring it Maybe it's on yeah. the stove until... I think it's you have to separated. set it somewhere. Yeah, it's separate. Yeah. And then you have to skim it off, and, and I think it has to separate mm -hmm. and sit yeah. somewhere. You know, that's where we have the, the cheese, the very yeah, strong yeah. cheeses that are aged cheeses, so they say. You can Google that. You <laughs> can Google that. And tell <laughs> Unless us, some of y'all know. Tell us, done it. Yeah. tell us in the chat. Oh, I'm sure maybe Barb has. And, and if, uh -huh. if you have an idea of what Job's even talking about here, like what, what he's kind of referring to, whether this is, you know, hit the situation that he finds himself in or just how mm. he was born, you know, the idea of, you know, being birth is kind of a messy thing. I don't know. I really, Nothing comes to mind for me right now. So I leave that up to you. Mm -hmm. So. Again, and he, he concludes by saying, you gave me life. We know that the Lord gives us life. Just We just confirmed that with Ecclesiastes 12. And the, and the Spirit returns to God who gave it. You know, We also remember that, um, I think it's first in Genesis 1, 27, that God breathed the breath of life into man and he became a living soul. So... And that's what Job is talking to. You showed me kindness by giving me life, by revealing yourself to me, and in your providence watched over my spirit. Up until now, Job has realized just how blessed he was, and he has tried to obey God and and to be and and to walk in His ways. And this is what's causing such a problem for him, an issue with him, a conflict in his mind. You know, and I'm sure we would probably be saying the same things. I, I did all these things, Lord. I did what I was supposed to say, and yet I'm still I'm being punished for something I don't even know what I've done. And so we can understand the anguish of his spirit. It's kind of a catch twenty yeah. two. Twenty two. The anguish of his spirit um, is caused by the fact that he doesn't know what he's being charged with, 
And he speaks the bitterness that comes out of his mouth at times comes out of that anguish of the soul because again, he doesn't know what he's charged with and he expresses that. I don't know what I'm being charged with. This is not right. It's not fair. It's not just of you, God. Anyway. Oh, we're going to talk about cheese, apparently. So, curd is made by you mix a yogurt starter. This is one of the ways. With warm milk and allowed to ferment for some hours. And after the fermentation process, the consistency of the flowing milk gradually transforms to a thick, wobbly pudding-like texture. Due to the bacterial fermentation and the final product, also has a tangy taste. Okay, whatever. But the yogurt mix, the starter, that's what God's pouring out on Job. Yeah, but, but we're trying to... Uh, that's interesting. I, I'm just yeah, not to, sure to, of the context of what Job's trying to say here by this. To bring the, the curdling... God's trying to curdle things. You know that's, what I mean? That's, prob that's possible. Yeah, that, that is true. You know. Anyways, oh, that's... But, the thing I was thinking of there. Anyway, let's go down to verse 13. And these things you have hidden in your heart, I know that this was with you. If I sin, then you mark me, and will not acquit me of my iniquity. If I am wicked, woe to me. Even if I am righteous, I cannot lift up my head. I am full of disgrace. See my misery. If my head is exalted, you hunt me like a fierce lion. And again you show yourself awesome against me. You renew your witnesses against me, and increase your indignation towards me. Changes and war are ever with me. So, Job continues. But now he's, he's, he's making a charge against God right now. And he, he's trying to tell God what was in his heart. He has a lot of disgrace. He said, judging, oh. judging by what's happened to me... Um, that this that you this is your punishment of me for my sin. It was concealed in your heart. I know this that this was in your mind. It was in. He's saying it was in your mind to do this at some point. Mm -hmm. He said because well, according to my friends, it's because I've sinned. Because I've sinned against you. There's iniquity in me. But there's iniquity in all of us. But th this is this is kind of a. You're, you're you're kind of pushing against the envelope here, Joe. Because yeah. now, and, he, and he's going to continue this as the anguish in his soul grows. He's going to get a little more bold in his criticisms of God, which is why God's going to come upon him quite, quite, hard, quite hard, not harshly, but hardly mm. with a lot of, in Job 38, you know. But now Job is saying things like, like he's accusing God of pre- like you planned this, you planned what was going to happen to me. It was in your heart to do it. It was in your yeah. mind to do it. And no, no, that's not true. Because what does that say about God? That 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 God is is like a man. That God can be capricious, and that was the problem. Um, that was the problem that a lot of ancient people had with their gods because they could be capricious because they thought their gods yeah. were reflected in natural phenomena like storms and weather. And uh, uh, um, storms, rain, natural uh, floods, earthquakes, and that sort of thing. That the gods were in that and that they were angry with mankind and they would wash out a whole family's food supply for no reason at all. Because they were capricious, because they could, you know, and and that's mm -hmm. and that's basically what Job is saying. To God, you're doing these things because on a whim. You're right, on that's a good way to put it. God's saying this to, or Job's saying this to God. He says, "You're like that. You just you're 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 punishing me for no reason." And he's whatsoever. still claiming to be innocent. And he, but again, but yet he's and this is important, okay? Because if he said if he were to agree with his friends, then he would show. He would fail God because he would show by doing that, that God's work was not strong enough in him. That even in, the, in this midst of persecution and, and all these things that are happening to him, it would be like denying God. It denying everything I knew about God and said, yes, yes. And he would be admitting a lie. He would say, yes, I have sinned. 
and he would say, I, I don't care what you say. Okay, if you say I've sinned, I've sinned. I don't know what I did. I don't know what that sin is, but I'll, I'll, I've sinned. Okay, I've sinned because I must be because I'm being punished. That would be wrong. That would be absolutely wrong. You know, remember, there's no conviction of the Holy Spirit here. The Holy Spirit hasn't been given yet. But Job knows in his heart of hearts by his righteousness that he has not sinned against the Lord. Right. And, but he's making all these these things. If I had sinned against the Lord, all these what what does it say about God? You know, it, and and he's trying to. I, I don't know if he is intending to 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 show his friends this, but they don't seem to realize that. It's it's. Think about it this way: when Jesus was on the cross, they were they were mocking him from the ground, and what were they saying? Come down from the cross, and then we'll believe that you are who you say you are. If Jesus had come down from the cross, he would have proven he wasn't the Messiah. He would have proved he, he wasn't the Son of God. By being obedient to the will of God and staying on that cross for us, he, he proved God, because he was God, right. obviously, but he proved God and God's words and God's purposes and God's intent. And that's what, that's what Job is, uh, all this great, this great tribulation that's surrounding him, and yet, He's still hanging on to his integrity. I won't That's admit right. I am, I've sinned, Lord, even though it seems like you're doing all these things to me for no reason at all. But I I can't admit something that I haven't done. That's integrity. Mm -hmm. That 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 shows great integrity. And that, that kind of integrity only comes from God. It doesn't come from human beings. Because a human being that didn't have God or didn't know God would just, as I said, give in and say, okay, whatever. If you think I've sinned, then I've sinned. Fine. Cause and effect. I'm being punished. I must have sinned. Let's move on. I think he felt like a criminal with no self-esteem or dignity. Yeah, that's exactly what he felt. That's a good way of putting it too. Huh? If I, and he says, if I sinned, you would be watching because, me. Well, he's watching him yeah. anyway. He said, and you would not let mm -hmm. my offense go unpunished. Right? Yeah. If I am guilty, woe to me. Even if I am innocent, I cannot lift my head, for I am full of shame. Again, that's right. a lot of what he said at the end of disgrace. At the end of chapters nine, mm -hmm. he said, "Even if I was innocent, see I would my be, misery. I would just feel guilty before you." God, look at me. See my misery. Don't you see me? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And he said, "Even if I am innocent, I cannot lift my head." That's that's what he said there. He said. Hunt me um, like a fierce lion. And he says, yeah. again, this is really important. This line, this little line, if I am guilty, woe to me. He's not admitting any guilt here. He said, yeah, if I am. If I am. Big if here. If I, I am. am. And he's he's almost challenging God. If I am, you know I'm not. And now it's going to be up to you to prove that I am. But in the meantime, I'm trying to find out what it, again, what it is I'm being charged with. Why you feel like you have to come? Because this is not the God I know. This is not the God, and and the way that the that my friends are portraying him is not the God that I know. I'm not aware of this. These, you know, you are the God who created me in goodness and kindness. You breathed me in. You breathed in me the the breath of life, and I became a living soul. I became a servant. I became a child of God. I don't deserve mm. this. If if I was guilty, if I knew what my sin was, then I would agree with my friends and I would agree with you. And this punishment would be just. But it's not. Now, you see, this is where Job, he does, he's at this point, he's lacking understanding because he thinks this is punishment. But it's not. It's not punishment. Satan's trying to prove a point with God and God's trying to prove a point with, with, with Job. And he says, if I hold my, and now he's talking about, if I was prideful, he said, I'm, I'm, I'm humble. I'm, I, I, and he's not saying it in a, you know, it's not that the whole idea mm -hmm. of humility being a man was so humble that they gave him a medal for being humble. And then they took it away because he wore it. Um, it's not like that. He, he, he's just saying, mm -hmm. you, you know, you've humbled me already by it, but I already was humble. I already I, I was obedient to you and obedient to the ways that you have taught me and, and, and where I was going in life. He said, if I was proudful, in other words, and that's prideful. what he means by or proud, prideful. Sorry, hon. Yes, thank you. Now, well, you wait. think this 
this probably really hurt God's heart as well. Knowing that he knew Job was righteous, and yet he, he allowed Satan to do this. I think God was touched by this. Well, we can surmise whether he was mm -hmm. or not. He certainly doesn't... Probably didn't want, he doesn't like to do it, but... Well, I don't know, I'm, it's just a thought I had. He, he, I'm sure that, you know, he knew what was going to happen, but, mm -hmm. you know, remember, this This is... This well, because he loves his creatures, he loves us so much. Yeah, but he knew that before you know? when, when he agreed to let Satan yeah. do what he's doing. But does, does that mean he still doesn't feel? That he doesn't feel Job's pain and Job's I, hurt? I'm, I'm sure that he probably mm -hmm. does, but I, I get the image of he's... He, that Satan and, and God are watching what Job is doing and listening to what Job is saying, and God isn't saying anything. I, I picture him in the throne just doing this. Mm. Just listening, mm. just watching. Mm. And, uh, well, I know Jesus is touched with our infirmities. Absolutely, he is, because he shared our infirmities. Mm -hmm. The book of Hebrews said that he shared our yeah. frame. That's why he was holy man. And holy God. Mm -hmm. That's why it's really important to understand that about the nature of Christ. He's he's got to be, you know, yeah. he's got to be to be the mediator we need. As I said yesterday, to, he's he's fully man to represent us before God, and he's fully God right. to represent God to us. Okay. He said, "If I was prideful, you'd stalk me like a lion." That means if I hold my head up high, mm -hmm. we all know that. And again, display your awesome power against me. So. However, I react to this, you know, and, and negative, and I, this would be a negative way of reacting to my my situation. You would stalk me. You would even you you would mm -hmm. crush me even more than you're doing now. You bring new witnesses against me. <laughs> I would suggest to you that he's talking about his friends, mm -hmm. and increase your anger toward me. Your forces come against me, wave upon wave. The unrelenting power of God. Changes and war are ever before me. That's what mine yeah. says. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Verse 18 to the end. Huh? Why then have you brought me out of the womb? Oh, that I had perished and no eye had seen me. I would have been as though I had not been. I would have been carried from the womb to the grave. Are not my days few? Cease, let me alone that I may take a little comfort before I go to the place from which I shall not return, to the land of darkness and the shadow of death, a land as dark as darkness itself, as the shadow of death without any order, where even the light is like darkness. Okay, back to his original theme. I yeah. wish I'd never been born. Yeah, again. And again, these themes will be coming over and over again. Hmm. We can understand that, you know given his situation and how he felt Why it, would was be I ever born, it would be difficult not uh -huh. to say that but you know that's the response i believe the prophet jeremiah said the same thing about the day of his birth mm. um mm -hmm. and i think we talked about that yeah i you know I, again i wish i had died before any eye saw me if only i had never come into being woe is me woe is me and carried straight Just from the womb leave to the me grave. alone to die are not my few days almost over? Again, this could be meaning I, I am in such bad physical straits right now, emotional straits and spiritual straits that that's what I think. Death, means. death is I feel he death on death my shoulder, coming, yeah. and, and and it's it can happen anytime. But it could also yeah. he could also be referring to the length of his life, a human a human life. You know how short mm -hmm. it is. Turn away from me so I can have a moment's joy. He said this before too. He said, stop, give me a moment's peace. Let me compose myself before I go to the grave. Because mm. that's exactly what he says in verse 21. Before I go to the place of no Which return. I shall not return. To the land of gloom and utter darkness. Mm -hmm. To the land of deepest night of utter darkness and disorder. Where even the light is of the darkness. We talked about this earlier. We'll talk about it again. This is Sheol. The place where all souls go. Alright? This is this is the place where it was it it is believed 
It is, and and the Greeks believe the same thing. Greeks and the Romans, holding cell. the Hades, <laughs> the holding place, the place where the souls of the dead go until the day of to the rest. Lord, until a judgment. They, and they that's go what Job rest. wants. He wants rest and freedom. And outside the Bible sources through. tell us that this the same thing that Job is saying here that their idea of what Hades Sheol is is a, it's a land of utter gloom. And, and darkness and disorder and even the light is like the darkness this isn't a place of punishment okay and I mentioned that before this is not hell hell is a place of punishment this is not this is a place where the souls of the dead go and this is where they will remain this is where we will go until before the, Lord the comes. day before the oh. Lord comes, praise God. But as we understand it, as is taught in the New Testament, as we understand it, that we we become the, the souls under the altar. That's the New Testament name for it. And we await the final judgment. And it, and it, it says in the book of Revelation, and Paul says it in Thessalonians, I believe, that and that last day the dead will be raised to life. Okay? All the dead will be raised to life. That the shield will be emptied of all, and we will all be given resurrection bodies. You, you know, we we think that it's just the believers, people who are faithful in Christ will have Anyone resurrection bodies. Ever... Everyone will get a resurrection body, but where yeah, you spend yeah. eternity in that resurrection body mm -hmm. will be determined on. Um, what you say about the son of god because we were originally created to live forever yes I so think, we yeah. are going to get that body back yeah right yeah. what sin destroyed it's going to be no longer in heaven yeah and we're going to return back to our original state which is why either place you're in you're going to perpetually live forever perpetually either in torment or in bliss and joyfulness with the Lord. And remember that at the end of yeah. the end of the book of Revelation where it says the books are brought out. We talked about this mm -hmm. before too. And it's opened up and all everything that we did in this life will be recorded there. Sin kills the body. But originally this body was not meant to die. No. No. Huh. But Jesus brings life. But now huh. we are restored. But again, and now sheep and goats. Yes. Those, those are rewarded. Remember when I said that when, in, through repentance, when we when we ask God for forgiveness and we right. legitimately, and we're legitimate about that. We, we we're, we're we're truly sorrowful, godly sorrow. We show godly sorrow. That sin that was written in the book gets wiped out, gets erased. And that will not be read mm -hmm. at the at the end of days. All right. So that's similar, and that's why it's important that repentance is so crucial for that. We do not want our sins to tell against us. The other thing too to remember is that we all want to be in the Lamb's Book of Life, and if we're in the Lamb's Book of Life, then we will we will be considered we we will be considered justified before in the eyes of the Lord. And he will allow us. He will bring us into heaven. He will bring us to where he is. So if you want to look in. But Jesus also said, and this is, I think I'm going to leave this here. Matthew 10. And you can look this up for yourself. Jesus said to his disciples when they came back and they were rejoicing because the demons were subject to them. Jesus said, Matthew 10, do not, maybe that's context was different. Anyway, the important thing is what Jesus said. He said, do not fear what men can do because they can only kill the body and that's all they can do. But fear yeah. him who can not he only the power, kill your yeah. body, destroy your body, but will cast your soul into hell. hell. Not Sheol not Hades, into hell. Mm -hmm. The place of torment, the place of punishment. Mm -hmm. you know, Job must think that's where he is right now. This, this place mm -hmm. of punishment, but the time has not yet come. 
but it we're, we're getting a picture of uh, just a little taste of, of what and in verse 21 and 22 i mean the word darkness is mentioned what four times three times yeah how many uh one two three three times utter uh, and and twice utter darkness yeah and uh, one two three uh, twice gloom. Utter, land of deepest night yeah gloom night like they're uh, okay but again this is not this mm -hmm. is not a place of punishment it's just a place where the dead go mm -hmm. okay we're talking about that maybe doing a study on ghosts the bible mm -hmm. teaches about ghosts but um that idea of human spirits human spirits do not get trapped on the earth they go to Sheol. that's where god right. sends them and they we are waiting there for that final judgment day when the books when will all be raised mm -hmm. up and the books will be opened praise god we have so much to look forward to in that situation Amen. but those that do not know the lord jesus mm -hmm. christ you know that's why we need to pray for our family members and our friends and, and mm -hmm. everyone you know they come to a saving knowledge of christ jesus mm -hmm. because it's 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 awful what's going to happen to them what would have happened to us if the lord had not shone his light on us and and revealed the lord jesus christ to us we need boldness we need boldness boldness and to live the way we ought to be living for Christ Amen. right now. Shine, let the light let shine the light out shine. of us. Father, we give you thanks, Hallelujah. Lord, for this time again in your word. Lord, there's so many important, so many crucial thoughts and ideas that are presented to us here in, in, in these chapters, Lord God. Things that we need to pay attention to, mm -hmm. things that we need to heed, things that we need to follow to be obedient and to walk in the light as you are in the light lord we thank you father god for the holy spirit that leads us and guides us into all truth in reading these matters yes lord. and father we do not want our understanding to be in sheol where there's utter darkness and deepest night we want our understanding to be illuminated you, by the holy spirit illuminated yes, so that we may be able to walk Praise in the light Jesus. as you are in the you are in the light lord god and father that our our hearts may become yes, hearts lord. of flesh where you may be able to write your mm. commandments on the tablets of our heart that we meant so that we may hide your word in our hearts that we would not sin against you lord god yes lord father we thank you for this time together i pray for mighty oh. blessing upon your <laughs> branches lord your mm. people lord god and I pray, Father, you will oh, continue to give us manna from yes, heaven. Lord. Give us the bread, Lord God, yes, that we Jesus. might we might be able to feed. We, we will be able to grow, yeah. Lord, in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, yeah, Father, yeah, again, Lord, for this Lord, time Lord, together. Lord, I pray Lord. a mighty blessing upon each and every person who is watching. In Jesus' yes. name, amen. 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 Don't forget, Living Stones tomorrow, Saturday. Mm -hmm. And Sunday night, our regular communion service. And for the Living Stones, we will be reposting. Yeah, uh, Pastor Jonathan. <laughs> Pastor Jonathan tomorrow because, or yes, Pastor Jonathan tomorrow because it was such a disaster last week, and and, <laughs> and, 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 none, and very few of you watched it could see it. So because um, it was posted on my other it channel, was posted my, on the wrong channel. And yeah, my tender heart. So channel. we do we apologize for that. <laughs> How did that happen? No. I don't know. I think it was your fault. <laughs> my fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you witnessed me hitting. <laughs> it's okay. It's a love town. <laughs> okay. Have a great day. And love remember, stay in divine today, Branches, because without him, we can do him. nothing. Amen. God bless y'all. Bye. Bye.